Hello and welcome to another Overlord lore video and today we will take a look at Sheltier and her vampire brides or concubines or nocturnal companions if you will. For despite them only having some screen time in the third novel, they are still quite interesting. But before we are going to take a closer look at all of them, let me thank my patrons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube thanks function for making one-time donations. Also please check out my newest video about Psychas and Espas, it's linked down in the description. Now with all of that said, let's dive into the basic like their power and their level before we come to the relationship with Sheltier. And first we have to clear where these monsters even come from. Aside from Sheltier of course, the vampire brides are so called pop monsters. And pop monsters are NPCs that are spawned from the very great tomb of Nazarick itself. And thus, they will reappear even when they are killed. Which is something that we only learn in volume 11. And the existence of the two vampire brides as pop monsters also has another implication. Because the pop monsters do have a natural limit. They can't be over the level of 30, meaning in turn that these vampire brides are at level 30, if not even lower. And considering that one of the brides has actually dueled brain Anglaus, the then second strongest man in the kingdom, we can reasonably assume that the vampire brides are also at least above the level of 25, otherwise they would have had a serious problem when fighting against brain Anglaus. Aside from their rapid speed, that is by New World standards, insane reflexes, again by New World standards, and their great physical strength, you guessed it, by New World standards, they all have quite the powerful regenerative ability and can heal wounds, for example, one originating from a bear trap in mere minutes at most, making them incredibly difficult to kill. If fitting countermeasures, like holy weapons or fire spells, aren't readily available, which as an undead the vampires are both weak to. And with their weaknesses covered and their strengths and their origins explained, let's get to their relationship with Sheltier, which isn't a particularly equal one. Simply speaking, Sheltier reigns over them like a tyrant, or better yet, a dominatrix. She is in absolute control over them, and as servants of the second floor, where Sheltier's home lies, they are there to serve Sheltier in any way, shape or form possible. Which among other things, meant that during the initial assault on the hideout of the Death Spreading Brigade, the mercenary group Brain Anglos was part of, the Vampire Brides had to literally carry the Blood Red Valkyrie on their very hands, while they did the walking, or rather running. Which from Shelty's point of view is hardly surprising. The initial attackers were so weak that she decided in her arrogance that she will continue to be carried, not by a coach this time, but by her two servants of course. Remember this was before Sheltier Bloodfallen was mind controlled and then defeated by Ainz, and therefore a bit humbled. And while she later have gained a certain sense of modesty to balance her overboarding pride and arrogance, this at this point hasn't happened yet. So Sheltier of course would be carried, but it doesn't stop there. Because lastly Sheltier Bloodfallen had been created by Perro Roncino, the arguably most let's call it nocturnally interested player among the 41 supreme beings of Nazarick. And Sheltier therefore was written with an interesting amount of many 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 interests and among many other things in women. So once again I have to stress this, this is canon, that the two vampire brides are her concubines and that they are there to please her in any way shape or form she desires. And yes, this again includes quite explicit acts, as well as satisfying Sheltier's multitude of, let's call it, special interests, as well as her pride and ego. Furthermore, due to Sheltier's tyrannical nature, the two vampire brides are also quite afraid of and submissive towards the floor guardian, and are quite desperate to please their mistress. This fear has gone as far as during the battle of one of the vampire brides with Brain Anglaus, the vampire bride was 
actually more focused on Shaltier and any possible punishment she could hand out than on the threat right in front of her, despite again Brain Anglaus being quite formidable by New World standards. So, in conclusion, while these two beautiful vampire brides felt more like accessories to Shaltier, at least in the anime, and while they are tied to the blood red Valkyrie, figuratively and sometimes literally, they are nonetheless a threat to basically any but the strongest of new worlders. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching, be sure to leave me your comments down in the comment section, and with that said, I say my special thanks to Dash Dash Dash, Order Daddy Order, Bad Girl Ye, Bad Burrito 316, Beezer, Ben C, Brandon D, Chrissy, Crowley 0221, Sia, Crystal Prime, Dead Slime, Death is Mercy, Deathless Dragonlord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devon Downen, Ding Dong, Duckwagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Feral Shivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Moreno, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Rhinomir, Cune Caracos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rock Ed Smasher, T. E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Zinukai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.